Hello everyone, it's August 14th, 2012, it's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday, and uh, before I get on to the topic of today, I also today recorded, uh, and I, something I've been do meaning to do for quite a while, but recorded a, a little clip about setting up your computer for Skype, and so wanted to briefly plug Skype lessons if you're interested in coaching or lessons. Um, I'd love to hear from you. And the second thing I wanted to mention was, as always, I'm always looking for interesting topics for Harp Tuesday. And again, if you have something that you'd like me to talk about, just send me an email. And for, for today's episode, I thought I would talk about lever changes. And I'm perhaps not the best person to, to talk about this, I started on the, the lever harp or Celtic harp, folk harp, whatever you want to call it. Um, played it for about close to two years and then ended up getting my pedal harp that I have now. And so for the last 20 years, it's I basically just played the pedal harp. So I don't necessarily have a, a ton of experience in terms of lever changes, but hopefully I can give you some interesting things to think about and some, some hopefully, hope, some possibly... Um, helpful suggestions. So I'm going to be looking at, conveniently, um, the third page from my Fantasy on Green Sleeves, the version for Lever Harp. And lever changes, I think, are kind of, well, you know, when you first start playing, the idea of coordinating two hands is, is pretty intimidating. It's kind of, you know, that the classic is, of course, patting your head while rubbing your stomach and and, and that uh, trying to do multiple things at once is confusing. And then we sort of get the uh, a hang of that and, and, and I think the idea of lever changes is, or pedal changes for that matter, it brings us back to that state of, uh, you know, patting the head and rubbing the stomach of trying to do multiple things at the same time it's, it's it can be disorienting and it's not uh, you know if it was an extra note that we were playing we'd be used to that but if you don't do a lot of lever changes it can be uh, you have to think in a different way and so for example you know I looking at this and playing through this before I started filming uh, because I don't do a lot of lever changes that you know I have to I have to really concentrate on that and so a couple of things that I wanted to focus on, and one is one is the um, one's the coordination and one is the speed. So when we look at these lever changes, one of the things to think about is is the coordination and think of about it as being sort of as if it were an extra note, as if you were playing it, it's coming in time. Um, and I think that can be a helpful way when you're learning a piece and learning the lever changes is to put that lever change on a beat so that it becomes part of the piece in a different way than you're just trying to get it in there somewhere. So I'm looking at this very first bar, we get. And then I'm gonna to try to change this with this chord. So that as I went faster there, I wasn't necessarily focused on changing exactly on, on that beat. But if I were learning this slowly, I go up there and find it, and then I try to change it right on that beat. So that's kind of trying to help with that idea of coordination and make it feel as if it's not so much you're doing separate things as if that lever change is a part of the piece and coming um, on a specific point in time. And, and then, of course, there's the speed aspect. And, you know, oftentimes the left hand is going to want to be doing other stuff, so you want to have this happen, this lever change happen, as quickly as possible. And, and there's a great example here. Um, uh, 
so it is bar 62, where the left hand has to grab this B and change it extremely quickly. Well, we need that D sharp, so. And, and as, I, as I wrote this, as I arranged this for the lower harp, this was a section where I was, well, well this is, this is pretty, pretty fast. So today, earlier, I was, I was just working on improving my speed on doing that. So, you know, we want to have, whoa, let's just try that once more. So at this point, I feel like I, I, you know, I'm usually pretty close to, to, to where I want to be in terms of the speed there. So a couple things to think about. Um, first of all, if you're finding that that lever change is coming really quickly, ignore the right hand. Th this becomes much more complicated when we get... When I got to think about the right hand as well. So if you try to narrow it down to let's focus on the least possible number of things that we're doing. So just the left hand and one of the things that can get you is you go up here you change this and if you don't know where you're going next then you're gonna have to your eyes are gonna have to travel oh where am i playing next and then you find it and by that time it's it's too late so you, it, it, you know it, obviously if the piece is memorized that's one thing but let's say you're reading from the music you know you're learning it you want to memorize that little section so that you know that after changing this, you don't have to look over there. You're just going to look, you're right, looking right on that, grabbing that F. Um, and again, oftentimes with, when you're doing something that's fast, the eyes can play a huge part. You might seem like that's not going to do much, but just having the proper focus with your eyes can really speed things up. So for example, as you're starting this, you should be looking already at where your hand's going. And then back looking to where, again, your your fingers are going. So a couple, those are some things to think about. Then what I would do is I would break it down. So for example, let's just play this G, look up at where we're going, you know, place the G, look up at where we're going, and just try to play the G and get up there as quickly as possible. Change it. Change it back. And it might, and we can, you know, if, if, if that's not working too well, take it slowly. Try to make this change as smooth as possible. And of course you might be using different sharpening levers, um, but however they work, trying to make that as smooth as possible. And as you're starting to feel more comfortable, see if you can start to speed it up and still have it be nice and smooth. So that time I missed, as I came up, I kind of got the tip of this. My thumb didn't fully uh, come underneath it to, to be able to confidently push it up. So again, I think that's something if I were playing the lever harp all the time, uh, I would build that uh, tactile memory relationship with where everything is so that finding this would be easy. It's just like if you played the harp for for a while, you can um you, you can often play stuff with your eyes closed if it's if it's, you know, especially if it's related because you've built in that picture of where everything is. So again, trying to build in that sense of where is that perfect point to come up and grab this so you can change it confidently and smoothly. And then I would practice the reverse, changing this, you know, before we change it, okay, I'm, I'm gonna place these notes, change this. And you might finish this off. Or, oh, right, sorry. 
change the top. And again, like there's this tendency, I want to keep my eyes focused up here because I'm going to change that. But once I've found this, once I'm getting ready to change that, I can actually start looking down at this F. So I'm trying to make that change play as smooth as possible and then see if you can fit it all together. Doing that again. And then seeing about, okay, let's see what happens. You know, once you got that up to tempo, once you got that, that at the tempo you want, then you would look at putting the right hand in and probably starting slowly. So. Um, and, and building up and again, thinking about, let's see, where do I want my eyes to be? I'm gonna try to get this placed it's as soon as possible so that I don't have to worry about that. Uh, and you know, but just like anything that you're practicing, lever changes can be thought of, might be thought of um, as, as a particularly difficult section. So whenever you come to a section that stands out, from the surrounding areas is being particularly difficult. You can break it down, uh, take it really slowly, work on little chunks of it, and, and build it up and build it up until you're, it becomes smooth and confident. So uh, those are just some th thoughts then on, on both coordination and speed. And the, you know, the more you do it, the better you'll get. And of course, often maybe if you're playing music which has very few lever changes, then you don't end up, when you come to them, they seem, again, that coordination, they seem foreign and difficult. So it's probably a reasonable idea to always be playing at least one piece that has some pedal, uh, not pedal, some lever changes just to keep your, keep your hand in it. Um, a couple closing sort of, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't call them tricks, but maybe unconventional ideas, uh, or at least certainly, um, I don't see a lot of them. Um, and one is something that I saw, uh, I think South American players do this a lot, and that is that if you're playing something up here, you're right next to the... Um, lever so it makes it a lot easier to change so for example in this little section if we were doing a lot less time spent in traveling to grab the lever now maybe the sound isn't quite as rich and this harp is maybe not the best example um, but it might be worth it just something to think about that that if you have a real, what seems like a really difficult and fast lever change, perhaps moving the hand up a little bit or a lot will let you grab it quickly. And the second thing is is right hand lever changes. And actually I, I use that in this piece. So bar 61, for example, and it happens again a few times. And while you may have not seen that very often, at least I, I don't, it, it's basically, you know, you're just changing the lever and you're using your right hand. You're coming up over the top of the harp and changing a lever. Now, you have sort of a limited range. It gets hard to change these guys. But something up here is fairly reasonable, you know. Ooh. From my picture on my video camera that I'm seeing right now, because everything's dark back there, it looks like there's di this disembodied hand hanging over the harp. Um, anyway, so yes, this disembodied hand, it was pretty easy to, to move this. And so for example here, I'll, I'll get into this on, on the, getting into bar 60. Uh, let me just check that everything else is correct, yes.
shoot, I missed this, missed this guy. But uh, you can see there, that was a section where the left hand's doing a bunch of stuff. So there's not really, a, again, we, we managed to jam this one in, but this is a much bigger jump. And the right hand's not doing anything for a, a fair stretch. So the, once it finishes that, you can just come up and whoop, grab this and have plenty of time to get back. So that's something, again, to think about when, if you're faced with a difficult set of lever changes, think about, can I move up the strings? Will that make it easier? Or can the right hand take it? And, and maybe that will make it really easy. So just a couple things to think about. And that's it for this episode. So I will see you in two weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>